Okay, start lah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good day, everybody. Um, welcome to um, Dika's page or welcome to our whatever social media page. Let's do it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> okay, let's try one more time. Good day, everybody. Um, today, we are very honored to uh, be able to invite two of our DCAS alumni to talk about their experiences in DCA and also share with us about their education journey um, with, other institution, with other institutions as well as in overseas. So without further ado, let's welcome Francis and Menzi. I forgot to introduce myself, Gan. Yeah, I was oh, gonna say that. One more time. Okay, let's do one more time. Okay, okay. E and good day, everybody. Hi, I am Venus Lim. I am the head of school for um, diploma and special needs with the Car College. Today, we are very, very honored to have Francis and Menzi, both our DCAS alumni graduated in 2015, to share about their experiences um, with DCA and with other institutions when doing their degree and master's. So without further ado, let's welcome Francis and Menzi. Yay! Hello. Yeah. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us today, Francis and Menzi. Right, it's been a while. You guys graduated in 2015, 2015. Yeah. So it has been how many years? Six years. <laughs> Six years or so. And then you guys have, you know, you guys have been doing wonderful things after you graduated from DICA. So today we're going to learn more uh, about you and about your study journey. Okay, but before that, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Francis, would you want to start first? Yeah, uh, so my name is Francis. Uh, so I'm a master graduate for education, uh, but I'm currently working in a construction company. Yeah, because uh, I want to explore something that is different from education. So we can see what, what else we can implement into the education field from other field tools. Uh, create something different and see education from a different perspective. Hmm. I always like to try different, different things, you know. It actually excites yeah. us when we get to learn something new, something that we have never experienced before. Right? Thank you so much, um, Francis, for joining us today. Next, we have Mansi. Mansi, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Mansi. Uh, I'm currently working as a research assistant. And uh, so that was like my what do I do during the weekdays? Lah? So during the weekends, uh, I'm actually a master's candidate. So I study during the weekend. That's cool. Thank you so much. Okay. So how are you coping so far with, with um, you know, this whole change? You know, so um, after, so I understand that Francis just came back from the UK. So are you doing well back to Malaysia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, well, I uh, do realise there's a difference between, you know, uh, the culture in UK and Malaysia. It's a very big difference and the way they do things and their practices, everything. But I think there's no right or wrong method. I think both uh, Western and Asia have uh, advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, so we need to see which one is suitable for ourselves. Hmm. Thank you for this um, good advice. I think we have to really learn how to adapt to all these changes, right? So what about you, Menzi? Because you're still studying, right? So how are you coping so far? Mm, I think uh, I'm doing pretty okay. I'm just trying to take one step at a time and see how, how things goes. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's very important as well. We've got to do one thing at a time, you know, and then try to um, adjust to the tempo mm. and you know to to the whole situation right so um you know the reason why we would like to uh, the reason why we invite you for this discussion session is for you to share with us right what 
um, about your experience studying with DCAT. So would you like to tell us a little bit more about your experiencing, experiences studying with DCAT last time? Any one of you can start first. <laughs> Uh, then I think I'll go first. Um, so I think the whole experience of studying in Dika is, is very positive. Um, I really learn a lot and mainly I think it's because of the size. People used to make fun of how, how small Dika is, but I feel like because of the size, uh, everybody knows everyone. And so we all created like a very tight-knit community and it's really nice knowing that uh, you know who's teaching you, you know the management staff and you know your classmates and that, that's really nice, I feel. And uh, and then we also joined, uh, Francis and I both joined the student council and that took up a lot of our time as well. And I find that um, those experiences really add a lot of colors to, to our years in Dika, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed, you know, Dika is such a small community, right? We actually run Dika as a boutique college, you know, um, unlike the other institutions, our we treat our students like our extended family. It's really like, you know, we know each other very well. <laughs> yeah. We, you, you guys hang around with the lectures. The lectures and the students actually don't have the, you know, we don't have the status differences in there, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, we really like, you know, like the relationship between uh, whoever, the staff, the lecturers, you know, and the students are very tight, very close to each other. Do you feel the same, Francis? Uh, yeah, I do feel the same. Uh, my experience in Dika was very positive as well. And um, so besides the learning experience, so I think the lecturers in Dika, they are very friendly. Yeah, and I think they are all very knowledgeable and very experienced. So I learned a lot from their sharing during the classes. Yeah, and I believe those sharing actually uh, give us more ideas on what education will be like, especially for us who have no experience in teaching before we enter Dika. Mm, yeah, so before you enter Dika, did you expect the same you know, from what you have shared with us, did you expect the same experiences that you get or you totally have no idea at all? You just came in and then you just try to do whatever you can or you actually set some expectation. You kind of like imagine how college learning environment is going to be. Did you feel a little bit upset when you, when you actually, you know, because we are so small and we take pride for it actually, we take pride because we, we, we really believe in education. And like what Francis said, right? We, mm, it's not just about teaching. It's not, you know, I teach you the knowledge and then that's it, right? So we really try our very best to make you value, you know, to understand what you want to become in the future. So yeah, did you have different kind of expectation before you enter Dika? Um, well, I didn't expect anything because the reason I chose early years education because I thought that kindergarten teacher is just about teaching ABC and one, two, three. Yeah, so I thought, oh, that suits me uh, well because I don't like to study. I struggle a lot <laughs> reading my uh, form four, form five. Yeah, so I told my mom, uh, since I'm standard one, I said, I don't want to study anymore. And then my mom <laughs> kept persuading me that uh, you need to study until form five, then you can choose whatever you want to do. Then who knows that I continue study in Dika, then I found my passion. And I think education is really meaningful. Then I go to degree and go to master's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah ironically, right? <laughs> you promise to yourself, you say, I don't want to study anymore. <laughs> But at the end, yeah. hey, you continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That is very true. When you really found your passion, your interest, you know, that can drives you, that can motivate you to, you know, to continue to want to become better. Yeah, right? We all know that, you know, being a kindergarten teacher in Malaysia, we just need a diploma certificate. You know, actually you can, you can graduate. You can actually venture into the, industry and start teaching start your career maybe open up a school but you didn't go for it because you want more you know and 
what makes you want more because you finally found something that really you know interests you that motivates you a lot of people had the same thought with you francis you know oh, really <laughs> is so easy <laughs> yeah. you know you just need to you know um no abc and one two three and that's it but we all know that that's not true <laughs> yeah so that's when uh i realized teacher kindergarten teacher requires a lot more knowledge than i thought i would need yeah after entering dika and you know all the courses sharing from lecturers yeah. so i thought oh <laughs> did i choose the wrong course <laughs> but then i as i continue in dika then i think it's worth it and that's what I enjoy doing. That's right, that's yeah. right. The, the persistency, you know, we have to be determined, isn't it, for something that we want to do. I know it's very challenging. A lot of students will complain that, ah, yeah, Dika College, very high expectation, high quality, you know, all the lecturers are very straight, you know, lots of assignments, and then, <laughs> 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 You know, we give you one and then we think um, you can do more, we give you another. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that is also make uh, why why our students are, um, you know, a, a lot of stakeholders actually like to hire our students. You know? I think that that is also one of the differences. What about you, Mans Mansi? Did you, did you expect the same, you know, before you enter the um, um, honestly, I have no expectation before uh, entering Dika because uh, after I finished my SPM, I had a chance to work with the three-year-old kids at my auntie's uh, nursery and I really enjoyed spending that four months there. And then I remember in April, she was like, Menzi, do you think you want to continue studying instead of like continue working here with me? And I'm like, uh, study ah. And then I, actually, I didn't know that you can actually study early childhood at that time because at that point of time, I was just very blur. I don't know what I want. I just find that, oh, it's very nice that uh, my auntie uh, invited me to go help out and I really enjoy working with the children. And then the moment she said that, oh, you know, you can study uh, early childhood also. I'm like, oh, really? Uh? <laughs> and then she gives a few, she gave me a few suggestions and then uh, I came back because uh, her center is in Ipoh. Then mm -hmm. I came back uh, with, my, with my dad and then we went to the, a few places. And then we end up uh, settling with Dika. So I, I don't really have any expectation. It was just, uh, oh, my auntie say can study. Then study, no, let's see, let's see what it brings me. Lo. Oh, that's mm. just how I, yeah, my, <laughs> yeah, I'm just like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you all have to, you know, I think it's very common for us to compare, right? Um, you know, to find out more what is the mm. course like, you know, and then, um, you know, why uh, Dika is different than the other institutions. We're not saying that the other institutions are, you know, it, we are just different, you know, mm. uh, because we practice different kind of culture and our belief and philosophy is also slightly different. So what made you think that you made the right choice? Because both of you continue. <laughs> you say it's not enough for me. Okay, it's not enough for me after diploma. You want to do degree and now masters, even graduated with masters. So um that, so there are two questions here what make you think that you have made the right choice with Deka, uh, or maybe what make you make a thing that you made the right choice to study education and further your journey you know in degree and masters which you that that's um yeah so maybe we can talk about this before the second question um i think i think i made the right choice because um, studying early childhood is not just preparing us to become a teacher. I feel like studying early childhood provide me like a very big, uh, I don't know if platform is the right word, but it's just, it just gave me this, this idea that uh, you can actually look into your childhood and, and find out uh, how, 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 why are you, why are you, I mean, uh, why have you become who you are today and mm -hmm. and uh why have you think like that and and all your sort of behavior and 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 mindset and all that can be found from your childhood and mm -hmm. i believe mr mohan used to always say that oh as you go through the the courses in dika you will be able to to find out and realize um who you really are and i think that that really shows um at the end of the course really so i think i i kind of make the right choice and and it really helped me become who i am today 
Yeah, to be more aware about yourself, isn't it? I think that's mm. the first step. We have to really identify ourselves before we can continue to make you know other decisions in life later. Because mm. we find out who we are, what we like, you know. And mm. yeah, I think that that's that's a very good one. Francis, what about you? Um, I think I agree with uh what Nancy just mentioned. Like we can explore ourselves. Like uh, what makes us uh, behave this way today, and we can reflect what happens in our childhood, and we can, um, let's just say like, uh, to have a uh, to understand, uh, to rationalize mm. our identity today. Mm. Yeah. So and personally, for me, uh, after studying uh education in Dika. I think it improves uh, my relationship with my families and my siblings as well. Yeah, because I understand why sometimes my parents behave that way and why am I behaving this way and how and the way we react to each other. Mm. Yeah, so that actually uh, help us to, you know, to help me to understand more. Yeah. And yeah. Then, yeah. Please. Yeah, uh, and then um, it, also helps me to like explore mm. like uh, how do I uh, explore how others react as well that like, we can understand why our certain of, of our friends they behave like this and I can understand them more instead of like complaining or teasing them behaving in a weird way mm. I believe for all this understanding right it's not just from um, you know the content that has been delivered, you didn't learn it just from the content, right? From the notes itself. I think more like, um, because in Deka, we do a lot, a lot of group works, isn't it? Mm. I think part of it is also, um, we've been through how to work with people. It's the interpersonal skills that we have learned, you know, during this period of time. And we made a lot of mistakes, mm. argue, we fought, and then we come to a conclusion, okay, la, forgive you, la, let's work it out together, let's make up again, you know, things like that, is it? So I think um, in, in Deka, we, we really, really, how should I say, uh, can I use the word drill? <laughs> uh, um, we we instill, want to instill. Yeah, 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 that's <laughs> well, Thank you so much, Nancy. <laughs> You know, it's so different. I have to be honest with you. It is so different from um, the transition from secondary to college learning. You know, from sec secondary school, it's more like, you know, uh, teacher-centered kind of method, right? So mm. I tell you what to do and then you do what I said. You don't do what I didn't tell you, correct? But in a college level, then it's very different. It's basically you, you will have to make the decision. You have to choose, you know, what to do. We will not give you the step-by-step -step instructions. Mm. Yeah, a lot of us are very uncertain about this, especially when they are still settling, you know, uh, from uh, secondary to a uh, higher, you know, level of uh, learning or thinking skills. So I think that is something that um, may be different, you know, uh, may be different. So, um, yeah, so whether we know we made the right choice or not, we have to try it, right? Yeah, after, after the process. <laughs> yeah, you have to go through it. You have to go through it, then only you'll be able to reflect, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that benefits me in this way. You know, whether you want to become a teacher, like like one of you mentioned just now, it's not just becoming a teacher after you graduate from diploma, right? Your be, being an early childhood educator is not the only pathway that you can venture into. And that's why both of you continue your studies, right? <laughs> Do you want to share a little bit with us, you know, your degree and your master's uh, study experiences? Nancy? Um, so, because uh, both Francis and I did our di uh, diploma in uh, Dika, right? And then after that, we went into different places. Um, so, after uh, our diploma, uh, I went on to study uh, degree and master's locally, and mm -hmm. Francis went to overseas. 
and um, our the, the name of our the title of our course is different as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think Francis can further elaborate on that later on. So um, I'll just continue on with my part. So um, I took a degree in early childhood education for um, yeah, and then I realized that um, in in Dika right. We were, get, we were given a very uh, quick um, crash course as to how early childhood is like. So they taught us about how, how to set up a school. We learned a little bit about some laws and some acts. Mm. We, we learned how to teach um, certain uh, subjects and, and how to actually uh, gain children's interest in that and to help them learn better and develop better. And then we also learned a little bit about um, special education. And I think there was also an elective on uh, inclusive education as well. Um, so uh, after our, like, after Francis and I reflect on the whole journey, we realized that um, the, the diploma gave us um, sort of like, you know, this happened in my classroom right now. I have this kid that I couldn't handle. Like I have this, this parent, how do I uh, communicate with my parent and things like that. So um, Dika gave us like a very... Uh, I wouldn't say like a quick answer to things. I would say it's sort of like what you can apply in your classroom right now. Mm, some you, some basic skills. Mm, yeah, some basic skills and what we can do now and in the coming coming few years. But when when uh, we go into degree, uh, for me personally, I, I feel like uh, I was then taught to to learn how to rationalize and, and justify why we do what we do, mm. uh, why we believe in what we believe. And uh, why do you practice this? And why is it of the best interest of the children? And we also learn to, to consider the stakeholders as well, such as the parents, the school, the community, and, and the government policies and all that. I'm not saying that Dika doesn't teach us all of this. It, it does. It's just that when I was in Dika, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I was still very young and I couldn't relate all of this together. And then mm -hmm. when I continue on with degree and, and they put everything together, and then when you reflect and you learn, it's like, eh, I sort of learned this last time and, and I need to learn how to make connections and, and uh, make sense of, of the whole the whole course. Yeah. 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 So um, in, in our diploma program, of course, you know, it, it's only a two and a half years program. So we what we try to do is to to give you some sort of foundation, everything with everything. So when you move on to degree level, you sort of like learn it deeper, you know. Mm -hmm with a higher thinking order, you know, skills, how do you apply, like mm. you can see how to make connection from theory to practices, you know, yeah, I mean, how to rationalize your actions, you know, and even your behavior mm. with uh, dealing with other people, dealing, mm. with children, dealing with parents, dealing with teachers, dealing with your principals, maybe. Yeah, that's interesting, you know, that's interesting. Yeah, what about you, Francis? Mm. Yeah, um, so like what Nancy mentioned just now, like uh, in DICA diploma, so what we learn is uh, more on to like teaching methods, mm. you know, we explore different ways of teaching, uh, which fits better, but in degree, it's sort of like, uh, why do we want to use this teaching method? Like, why do we want to use play? So in DICA, we know play is important and lecturer encourages it as well. So in degree, we we'll explore how play actually advantage children in which way and the process, like which process of play actually uh, advocates children's learning. Mm. Like that. Yeah. So I think that uh, it also uh, help us to, you know, like uh, get evidence for what we believe like yeah. in diploma, we learn a lot of theories, yeah. yeah, and we just know the theories, but we don't know why it happens, mm. how it actually, how the uh, where does that theories come from? Yeah. So yeah. in degree, we actually know how where it comes comes from and what are the actual experience results are. Yeah, mm. so from there we uh, understand more about the theories and we can know how it really affects our teaching methods. That's right. That's right. You know, it's um, it's different level of uh, thinking order already, and then like like what Nancy or mentioned just now as well. It's more on application, more on answering why, you know, how do we make connection and so forth. So, uh, Francis, would you like to also share a little bit with us, yeah, about your master's uh, program in the UK, um, and how was the experience like? 
I'm sure a lot okay. of I'm sure students would like to you know hear uh, um a lot of students in Dika right they actually wanted to pursue their further studies in the same field uh, some okay. of them maybe want to venture into special needs education some of them want to um, you know venture into continue in early childhood some of them went into psychology and maybe some other industries as well but still related to early childhood so um yeah francis would you want to share a little bit about your experience yeah um so the master course I'm, i took was a uh, master in education so it's just uh education in general uh well, as I mentioned earlier, I don't like studying. <laughs> but I thought a uh, diploma was okay. I can cope. And even degree is in uh, other country, but I still think uh, that's fine. I still can cope and I graduated. So I was like, okay, I can do master's because it's just one year. So I took it. And then after the first day of my class, <laughs> I regret it so much. <laughs> Oops, I think we've lost you. I'm, I, I'm Hello? Yeah, yeah. We can hear you now. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And so I thought of giving up. I really want to give up and tell my parents I don't want to study anymore. I want to come back. It's so oh. difficult and it's so hard. And I didn't expect that at all. Mm. Yeah, because um, in master's, the le uh, it's very, a very big gap from degree. Yeah. yeah, the lecturer also uh, told us that in the first class. And I thought, oh, I think it's okay because I managed degree and I think that that will be fine. And all our classmates, they actually also struggle, even they are local students. Yeah, because the content is really different mm -hmm. and it's the topic that we never taught before. So in my master course, it uh, concentrates on more about the political side and how policies affect our education. Yeah, so, you know, like the Bronson Burner diagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in Dika, it will be in the middle, the micro circle. Yeah, so it will be the child itself. So we focus how, on what, uh, what are the teaching methods, you know, mm -hmm. that we can uh, use on the child. And then for degree, it would be like the EXO, like how the families affect them, teachers' beliefs, the theories and everything. Yeah, so in masters, it will be the outer circle, the macro and the chrono, which when we study that uh, von von Berner diagram in uh, diploma, we thought, oh, I won't touch that thing at all. <laughs> how will I want to, you know, how, we don't know how uh, policies or political things will affect our education. Yeah. So I never thought I, I will study that, but the masters forced me to do that. <laughs> yeah. So um, it gives us a really different perspective on education. Yeah. yeah. And it sometimes makes me uh, uh think, am I really doing education? Mm. Yeah, because it says something like uh how the political. Uh, parties influences our education and our education is it decided by the educators or the political yeah so it talks about things like that which we never thought before that's a very uh you know strong point of view um yeah you know i try to avoid and escape from this part as well because i i thought you know being happy myself, teaching children or teaching, you know, uh, college students, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm doing a good job for that. You know, I try to avoid from thinking, you know, how whatever government, the decision from a government and the policy makers and all that, I know, I know where you're coming from, Francis. I know sometimes we really, really struggle and sometimes we have doubts as well. The doubts is like, yeah, so <laughs> what? <laughs> So there they go, you know. Uh, Yuri Brofman, yeah, uh, ecological theory is one of my favorite theory as well, you know, because it, it's very, it's very human, don't you think so? It looks into so many layers of perspective and how it is affecting each layer directly. <laughs> mm. Even though we are far away, but it is affecting us directly. 
Yeah, look at yes. our education system in Malaysia. How is it different from other countries? It's good that you get to realize this, you know. Of course, you struggle. Um, and I think the context and the policy that you've learned in UK is also um, not something that you're familiar with, right? And uh, do you think that you can apply all this uh, when you come back to Malaysia? If you, yeah, what do you think? Because, um, you know, the, the policy, you know, everything is different, right? Our context is different, our yeah. culture, our practice is different. So um, do you think we can apply? And how would you apply all this? Um, um, well, um, as I go along with my master's, I would say that um, because for us, we used to think that Malaysia education has a lot of problems and then the Western country, they won't have problems. It seems like so perfect. Their teaching methods is so good, you know, they won't have many problems. Mm -hmm. But during uh, the class uh, for my master's, uh, I actually realized that they also have lots of concerns and issues that they are currently facing. And it's also critical as well. So I think it's not just Malaysia is having issues on you know education, but other countries also having issues, serious issues. But we just maybe we just don't realize that, yeah, yeah. because we see things from different perspectives. So I think um, I wouldn't say we can apply exactly the same thing, uh, in Malaysia, but we can adapt and adjust a little bit to take the uh, most important element to apply in Malaysia. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So for example, uh, because I did uh, internship in UK as well, in UK school, government school. So one thing I learned because previously we always emphasize play, you know, play and learn, you know, learning through play. So we try to use different uh, materials, different tools, you know, to make the children play and learn something. Yeah. But one thing I uh, observe from the school is they don't use a lot of materials. They don't use a lot of tools. Mm -hmm. They just use cardboard, pencils, basic stationery, mm -hmm. and they can create lots of things. Mm -hmm. And then they learn a lot of knowledge. So for example, um, the children will just uh, take the cardboard boxes and then they will just make something, okay? So after, let's say they make a car. After they make the car, then the teacher will encourage them to make a label, mm -hmm. to label your part. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the wheel. So you write a wheel and then you cut the label and then you stick on the wheel. And then this is the, part, uh, the window. Then you write window on the paper and then you stick on the window on, at the, on the car that you made. Mm. Yeah, so in that sense, children learn writing, they learn language, mm. they have uh, fine motor skills, yep. they do art and craft at the same time. And then the teacher will also say, uh, how many wheels does the car have? Maybe right. during the process of children making, yeah, they will say, uh, how many wheels does your car have? Or maybe even sometimes children say, uh, my car only has two wheels. Right. The teacher will not say, uh, that's not right. And then the teacher will ask them, um, uh, why does it, uh, why does it so? Mm. Uh, can you explain why? And then maybe the children will say, uh, because I want to invent something or whatever, you know? So we just let them create. Yeah, so that's creativity as well. Yep. So that's and like five to six elements in there with just cardboard and scissors. Mm. And so, yeah, so that is, what I think the real meaning of learning to play right. instead of making lots of props for them. Very flexible, yeah, in terms of yeah. mm, very flexible and very child-centered as well. And yeah. um, you can see that the educators, the teachers are very uh, flexible in accepting different responses, you know, from yeah. So we are not that rigid and structured anymore. It's okay to have a structured lesson, but then um, you know, how you manage the class, you know, you don't necessarily always need to have a structured lesson plan, step one like this, step two like this. You can always go with the with the child's interest, you know, child, yeah, child yeah. 
approach that that's that's very cool and i think that in malaysia we are also slowly moving forward you know and a lot of uh, places also practicing child-centered method um, so there's no right or wrong there's no good and bad and whatsoever um, we just want to find out the best interests right from yeah. the right mency yeah yes. so you're doing a master's now yep. how, how is it different and and yeah did you actually have the same struggle like francis i had i struggled a lot when i did this <laughs> like i say very similar to francis my my masters um has to do with a lot of writing academic writing and uh that is something that uh i have you know i didn't have the chance to practice with you know so it, it's like a very big shocking uh, at the cultural shock line you know we just have to quickly adapt yeah and quickly pick up the academic writing skills so that we can, you know, yeah, so that we can graduate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so so I guess, Mency, are you having the same thing? Um, I've, um, pretty similar, but mostly is on my, um, my personal uh, mindset. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, the master's course that I'm in right now, it's not research-based, it's actually a modular basis. So writing, like the academic writing part, it's just um, one, uh, one module, so it's not the whole thing, so it, I don't have to deal with that yet. So um, the, the, the part that I struggle with is that uh, when I first joined the class, I was a fresh graduate from degree. So right after I finished my degree, I took a short break and then I continue on with master's. And Oh my god! It was such a big difference, uh, in 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 the in the sort of classroom. Because when I first started doing my uh, masters, it was in May last year, so it was still MCO and uh, yeah, uh, the, we we still cannot go to uni and everything is still online. So in an online class classroom environment, um, it was very scary because I learned that a lot of my classmates they are from different places, they are from different background very impressive background and I'm over there like oh my god I'm such a small potato why am I here uh, I feel like I don't fit in you know mm -hmm. and um and then soon I realized that uh it's, it's not it's not about uh your experience it's not about your background it's about why you're here so I have to like struggle with that why why am I doing this <laughs> and, then, and then I slowly learned that oh it's it's, it's more on my mindset it, it's more on how I need to shift my perspective from how I don't belong to like I'm here to learn yeah. so um, I'm not comparing our background I'm here to learn from everybody else's experience so what I enjoy most about my um, master's course right now is that um, the questions and the discussions that we have in the in the class I mean you know virtual class it, it's mm -hmm. very fun because you get to know what works for my friends and what doesn't work for them and uh, how is it different and, and how are they applying their uh, previous background to teaching and it's really interesting to, to learn from their perspective. Mm -hmm. For me, it's finding purpose and like, yeah, finding purpose basically. <laughs> That's very interesting, isn't it? You know, at a different level, see diploma, moving on to degree and then masters, you know, it's not it's not easy anyhow from all these levels. It's just that you have to um like like Mency said, you have to quickly adjust yourself and adapt mm -hmm. the situation and you have to just be persistent and to know why you are here, right? Mm -hmm. Why did you make this choice before that? Why do I you know it's, Why did I sign up for this? <laughs> it's so easy to give up, isn't it? It is so easy to just give up, you know, all of us wanted to give up <laughs> before this. But then, hey, <laughs> it's all done now. <laughs> yeah, imagine imagine yeah. if that first day I did not overcome that hurdle in my mindset. Oh my God, well, where would I be right now? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think, yeah, it's, it's very, um, you know, you pointed out this very positive uh, point a very important perspective you know if we don't change our mindset if we continue to blame continue to dwell into all these negative thoughts then forever we are not going to be successful and do whatever that we want to do right yeah and i was i was reading an article for uh, my assignment that day and it was saying how children were saying that oh maths is very difficult I i'm struggling so hard it's so difficult and then the teacher was telling them how about uh you you see it this way uh, when you struggle with a math, math problem, it means that you're lacking of something and learning is happening. That's why you're struggling. And when I read that, I was like, ah, this is like my tagline for math. <laughs> That's cool. 
I think um, for me, it's not afraid of making mistakes. <laughs> that too. That too, right? I, I, I learned that in diploma, really. Just do, just try only, just try. <laughs> yeah, because in our education system, we are so result-oriented most of the time. And then uh, because of that perspective, we are afraid of making mistakes. And we are also very cautious. Exactly. So cautious. Don't yeah. have to be so cautious. One. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. No, don't have to be so cautious. <laughs> I hope this message really uh, get through and um, our DECA current students really, uh, you know, I'm sure they will benefit from watching this video. So thank you so much, Mency and Francis, for this wonderful discussion. Yeah, like I said, I hope this video is going to benefit many of our students, um, you know, or maybe students who just uh, graduated from the SPM or STPM and looking for, you know, don't know what to do. So, um, yeah, so if you're uncertain with what you want to do, um, you know, you can always check out our DCAS Facebook page and our website to find out more information. Um, I think um, last message, right? Uh, I, I, after, you know, sharing, after listening to your, uh, both of your sharing, I think that we just need to continue to try and to believe in ourselves right to yeah to continue to believe ourselves we just need to take every challenge as a learning opportunity to grow and to gain and don't afraid of making mistakes right so um yeah so we wish everyone including menze and francis the best in finding your own journey in finding your own career pathway yeah maybe your education journey as well so if you want to learn more about virtual learning mood, we are going to talk about this in our next video. So uh, make sure you check out our Facebook page and our website. All right. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for our next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Wait, ah. <laughs>